Uh, people are always asking us whether they should pay for their social community and there are, there are two ways of doing this. One there's um, paying for ads or paying for to sponsor content, uh, paying for social media advertising and then the other one is to uh, pay for a social community, to pay for a social following, whether that's buying Instagram followers, Twitter followers, Facebook likes. Um, that's not something that we would recommend at Jellyfish because these accounts are fake. They will never engage with you, they'll never talk with you, they'll never like, share and, and comment on what you're doing. Um, and kind of five years ago when Ashton Kutcher was um, you know, trying to get to a million Twitter followers and he was the first one to do that, that's all ever anyone wanted to do. They wanted to get that, those big likes, those big numbers. I mean, actually now we're more, we're more focused on the engagement metrics. So we want to make sure that we're getting the likes, the comments and the shares. Uh, it's not about having you know, how many Facebook likes you've got, how many Twitter um, followers you've got. It's more about you know, the engagement rates. And actually, when I look at account accounts, Facebook accounts or Twitter accounts for my clients, for their competitors, I would much rather see um, a Facebook account that's got 1,000 likes, but it's got like a 10% engagement rate than an account that's got 100,000 likes, but nobody's engaging. Because that's a real red flag. They haven't really understood social. There's no one engaging with the account. The pitfalls of buying a social media community are that it's going to be really difficult for you to meet your objectives, your digital marketing objectives, your business objectives, your social media objectives, because one, these accounts are never going to engage with you. So say for example you've got, um, you've done the look to the status people faker checker, which is a tool you can look at online to see um, how many Twitter followers are fake potentially. So if you say got 10,000 Twitter followers and you know 10% of those are fake, 9,000 9, of those um, are going to be real, the other 1,000 are going to actually be fake. Um, so when you're looking at kind of engagement rates, um, you know, the average engagement rate on Twitter is, is 3, 4, 5% roughly. Um, actually, if you're going to be looking at engagement metrics, um, you need to actually set yourself kind of lower KPIs because it's going to be a lot harder for you to reach that kind of 3, 4, 5% base on your fake Twitter followers um, than it is if you had those kind of genuine accounts. So actually when you're measuring your KPIs, you need to be kind of lowering it and actually be looking at your good Twitter followers, kind of the good Facebook likes that you've got, and actually measuring it from that rather than anything else. Equally, when it comes to um, looking at other metrics as well, you know, you want to kind of increase your engagement rate on, on, say, Twitter or Facebook. And if you increase your engagement rate, you'll also be looking to meet other objectives. It could be driving traffic to your website, for example, getting blog comments. So if you've got kind of less good Twitter followers, less good Facebook likes, not only will you not get any good engagement, you're actually also going to get less people driving traffic to your web, coming to your website or commenting on, on your blog. So if you've used the status people fake checker on Twitter, and at the moment there isn't something with Facebook as well, but you can actually go back and look over your likes, the only way to actually get rid of them is to go through each individual account and block it. That's the only way. So if you've bought 10,000 Twitter followers, that's going to be a lot of time and effort to actually go through and manually get rid of them all. So it's, it's up to you whether you consider it worth the time and the effort to do that. Um, but do bear in mind that um, Google, for example, have penalised websites that have a dodgy backlink, backlink profile in the past. Um, how do we know that Facebook and Twitter aren't going to do something similar and that actually your social visibility could be affected because you bought Twitter followers um, or Facebook likes in the past? And that's something you know, really key to, to think about. And if you're worried about your engagement rates at the moment because you've got this fake Twitter following and you're seeing an engagement rate of, of 1% or 2%, you really need to think about your engagement strategy. How can you get the good followers that you've got, the active Twitter followers, the active Facebook users, really engage with your content? And, and that's about making it relevant to them. So it's really important to think about, you know, what can they do? What, what, do, what do they want? What, do they, what kind of content do they need? And actually sharing that and allowing them to share it with their, with their followers.